Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Austin Ross here. On this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. So today I'm back out here on the privacy fence job. As you can see here, I just got through welding all these bottom tracks in and then, then these top tabs. Bottom track all the way around. Actually just got through buffing them all off. I welded them all first and then I went back and brushed them all off with my cordless grinder. But this is the progress. I'm excited. This is, a, this is another huge step. I am going to be painting this fence. That's one of the reasons why I brushed all the welds off. Some people don't worry about that. I actually do on mostly everything that I work on. Even my pipe fence and whatnot, I just brush the welds off. I just feel like it's complete that way. And whoever does paint it, I don't usually offer paint necessarily, but whoever does paint it, if they do want to paint it, I like brushing the welds off. That's just something I like to do. It makes me feel more complete getting the slag off my welds. But anyway, right now, the next thing I'm gonna do is measure all my tops for my top track. The top track is literally just gonna slide over this. And then I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole probably in the track and all the tracks and then self tap into this tab that I put up here. That way in case they ever need to replace the picket, all they gotta do is pull a screw out here and on the other side of the section and then just pull that top track off and replace the picket, put the track back on, put the screw back in. And ideally that's uh, the way it's gonna go. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Put all my caps on and then measure for all my top tracks. But do y'all see how thin those are? They're good looking caps, but they're just pretty thin. Yeah, I wasn't gonna put all these on yet, but to be honest, I don't want any rain getting down in these posts because it may be a few more days before I get back because I got to I have to pull measurements for a gate, build a gate, and then come up with my paint plan. So, might as well put all these on here. That way it looks nice and finished and no water is gonna be getting down in these posts. And then I'm tempted to even put some pickets in just so they can have a fence the neighbors too you know <laughs> so they can all have a fence again while I'm gone I'm trying to decide if I want to drill all the holes in those tracks here or at my shop all right ladies and gentlemen looking good looking good
So I get all the way to the end and I find an easier way right here. The last two sections I'm putting pickets in, I find an easier way. Just like that there. I've been fighting it past hour and a half. Could have just been doing that right there. Okay, it's not done, done. Still gotta paint all the metal and I still have to rip the slats for all these gaps that you see but this here is a good feeling here's the before fence to take this out and replace it with this is just absolutely incredible this is why I love what I do I could just work till midnight on all this. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do this morning is come through here and first of all pull out all these pickets that I've dry fit. Obviously I'm not, I'm not done, but I did put the pickets in last time I was here just to make sure everything worked right. But if you notice, the only problem with this fence is these cedar pickets are 5 eighths of an inch thick and uh, being six foot tall like this with no member in the middle, it's just a touch flimsy. So I'm gonna come through here with one by two by 11 gauge rec tubing right in the center on each side, run one on the inside and then one on the outside. That way these pickets can still run down through there but it'll allow you know like if dogs are on the other side pushing on it it'll only go so far and then same with this side it'll only go so far and we still won't have to put screws in it it'll still be user friendly as far as them ever having to change a picket that's the first thing i'm going to do today most likely that's as far as i will get today after that i will go through and drill a hole in all these top tracks on each side that way there will already be a hole in this and all we'll have to do is just drill a hole the self tapper into this tab here so drill holes in all those and then the last thing that i gotta do is this gate this is a example of what i'm gonna do with all these sections today but anyway yeah i gotta hang this gate and then i've got to mount a piece of rec tubing to this where the gate's gonna latch which is right here, mount a piece of rec tubing. And then the last thing that I'll have to do is put all my pickets back in, and then I'm going to get a table saw today to, you know, rip this long way. I'll have to rip, you know, one picket a long ways to fill in the, the gaps. So then that'll be the last thing. And then this project will be complete besides paint. I was gonna paint it, but the homeowners decided they wanted to paint it, so that's okay with whole A Ross. I want to offer paint one day, but uh, that's just not something that we do a lot of right now, so um, that's fine. I decided to run a string line. You know, I talk a lot about fence being appealing to the eye, and this is a prime example because even though this fence is level, or at least I tried to, like this section and this long section here is like level with the world, whenever I go to put in this middle member, I want it to look continuous like from afar you know like from the road or like if you're standing right over here looking down at I don't want there to be like a little dog leg or anything in it on this particular fence I want it to look as straight as possible because everything else is as straight as possible well whenever you go to like I was just planning on measuring up from the top of all of these 33 inches but the problem with that is is since these were two separate pieces these bottom tracks Whenever I put them in, I notice, or whenever I was putting them together and whenever I put them in, sometimes one leg might be a little bit taller than the other to make it like straight up and down or whatever. So anyway, I can't really go off of that or I don't want to because it's uh, more room for air. So I just pulled up 33 inches down there, ran a string, you know, pretty close to level. You can see it's not level, but I'm not entirely concerned with that. It's pretty close and I went ahead and took a measurement down here also and marked it but now i'm going to come through here and mark my string like this that way there's less 
guesswork. The only trouble with string line is I measured right here about midway through my fence, measured up on this post, and you can see my mark 33 inches is right here, and my string's down here. So, it's the only thing about string line is you do have to compensate or keep in mind that it that it sags all right now that I got everything laid out I know my height of my cross members where they're gonna live next thing I'm gonna do is pull my measurements Now that we got all our cross members cut, my buggy's ready. I'm gonna show y'all my jigs that I built. I built these at home in my shop because I had some cut off pieces of this three inch. So I just built them. But see the uh, slats are five eighths of an inch thick and this is three inches. My original thought, I thought I was gonna be able to just put it flush with the outside and it would work, but it was just real sloppy in here. So I built me this jig and I put a piece of one eighth plate over here and then a three quarter a rod because that's the that's the space I like. That's what I made them was three quarter because three quarters only an eighth inch bigger than five eighths. So therefore the sixteenth on each side of the slat. So I'll lay a piece in there and I'll lay a piece uh, right here up against all up against that and it should be what I, what I need there. So as long as I make this all the way, you know, bring this all the way up against here and you know the angle right there to my line in theory ought to be uh ought to be able to set this up like so i'm in there all the way up against go fire up my well machine and i'll tack tack probably on top and then probably pull my jigs jigs off and then and then go ahead and weld it. If I had another welder here, like in the future, just like I like to do fence, I like to, I usually like to tack it off and then like tack the whole thing and have somebody come in behind me and start welding it out because it's like faster. Obviously, you got two people and whatnot. But since I'm by myself and I've got this little buggy action, I'll do the same thing I did with these bottom rails. So just tack it, pull the jigs off, and then just weld them and then move to the next one. Let's fire this old TIG 200 square wave up. Made my leads longer also, put me a splice in there, had some old cable laying around the shop. This right here is the little things that I like to do. I just think it makes a big difference on quality. For one, it just looks a lot better. And for this particular job, it's just gonna allow that, that those pickets to get in here a lot easier and stuff. 
and it allows you to check to make sure you don't have no missed spots. As you can see here, I ended up bringing the top tracks home with me and drilling them the next morning in my shop with the mag drill. So much easier. The grinder holder that I'm using here in this clip will actually be coming to the Aros welding store soon, along with one or two more restocks of circle burners, grasshoppers, and anything else that we're short on. For sure, one more order coming real soon. Potentially, hopefully, we're crossing our fingers for a bigger order before Christmas. And the product that I'm most excited about that's back in stock on the Industrial Tradition website is the Leather Patch Hat. For those of you who may not know, we have been out of stock with these Leather Patch Hats for, it seems like almost a year now. Long time, way too long, but they are back in stock now. Should have enough to get us through holiday. We'll see how it goes. And last but not least, thank all of you who have given the Inner Circle a chance. We have quite a few members that have joined. There actually seems to be some action going on in the inner circle now. I'm super excited to see that. Like I said in last week's video, Kayla and I see tons of potential. It just needs lots more members to actually be able to utilize it as a networking area for the welding industry. But it's a work in progress and we're thankful for all of you that have given it a chance. If you haven't joined, if you're hesitant, it's $5 a month now. You can cancel after your first month, but I highly encourage you to give it a chance because one day I do believe that it is going to be super, super beneficial to the industry. But keep in mind, you only get out of something what you put into it. So that is that is a key point with the inner circle. But anyway, we're super excited about it and we're thankful for all the new members. Thank you all for watching and remember, learn something every day.